I want to direct your attention to two verses of Scripture before I have you be seated. Colossians 3 and Ephesians chapter 5. Colossians chapter 3, Ephesians chapter 5. Colossians 3.16 said, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Ephesians 5.19, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I believe God has given me a word for everyone that's in this place or they'll listen to the podcast later that's going through a storm. Everyone that's going through a storm of life, whatever it is and however long it's been, amen. I believe God has given me something to say today about that. And I want to preach on the subject, the storm will not silence my song. The storm will not silence my song. Let's praise Him as you're seated. Lord, we thank you and we appreciate you. Have your way, Lord. Let the anointing be here, God, and touch every heart in Jesus' name. And you may be seated. God bless you. Amen. You know, singing has been around as long as people have. For hundreds and thousands of years, songs have been sung about everything under the sun. Singing is a very powerful form of expression. Amen. One man said, Singing connects the mind with the heart and the heart with the soul. So sing, I dare you. Amen. People sing about good times and people sing about bad times. In fact, there's one whole genre of music dedicated to the bad times and it's called the blues. Amen. And you know, the titles of some of the most famous blues songs of all time are some of these. The thrill is gone. Help me. I'm tore down. Nobody knows when you're down and out. Born under a bad sign. The sky is crying if trouble was money. Stormy Monday. Every day I have the blues. Everybody needs somebody to love. It hurts me too. I can't be satisfied. Love is vain. Down in the hole. Still raining. And hellhound on my trail. Amen. All uplifting titles, don't you think? Amen. About people going through storms in their life and singing about it. Amen. And I'll tell you something, whether we realize it or not, amen. Amen. At the time before we came to the Lord in our life, amen, our life was the blues. We were singing the blues. Amen. There's times in our life, there's times in my life before Christ, I thought I was happy. I thought everything was good. Amen. But I didn't know, amen, what my purpose was yet. I didn't know what God God had for me. Amen. So I was really singing the blues and didn't really know it. Amen. And it's not that we didn't have a song, but we were singing the wrong song in our life. Ephesians 2.12 said that at the time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. That's what we were before we came to the Lord. Amen. Psalms 40 verse 2, we were in a horrible pit. We were in the miry clay, but he brought me out of that pit. Amen. He put, brought me out of that miry clay. He set my feet on a rock. He established my steps. Amen. I'm not singing the blues anymore. 1 Peter 2.9 said, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Amen. We weren't for what we are today, and thank God for it. I'm not singing the blues anymore. I'm singing a different song. (laughs) 
When we come to Jesus and he forgives us of our sins and fills us with his spirit, amen, he gives us abundant life and the promise of eternal life with him in heaven someday, praise God, amen. And then we start singing a new song that he gives us. Psalm 40, verse 3, he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. We're singing a new song of salvation, a new song of praise, a new song song about the glorious God that we live for it's a song of redemption it's a song of hope amen it's a song of the praise of the one who loves me and died for my sins that I might really live I'm singing a new song Psalms 96 verse 1, O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord, bless His name. Show forth His salvation from day to day. And I do it by singing a song. Amen. The song of God that He gave me. A song like He's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. I like that song. I'm singing that song now. Or you don't know like I know what He's done for me. That's a song I'm singing now. Or how about look what the Lord has done. That's my song now. Amen. I'm no longer singing. Nobody knows the trouble I'm in. Nobody knows my sorrow. I'm not singing that anymore. I'm singing a new song. Amen. He's done it before and he'll do it again. I'm singing, look what the Lord has done. Praise God. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. Praise God. The first mention of singing in the Bible is found in the second book of the Bible, Exodus. It takes place in chapter 15 right after, amen, the people of God miraculously cross over through the Red Sea, amen, and the Egyptian army trying to follow after them get drowned in the sea, amen. God had given great deliverance, praise God, and victory over the, uh, the enemy, praise the Lord. And the Bible said in 15 verse 1, of Exodus, then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God. That's the song I'm singing now. David sang songs to God all the time. He's taking care of his father's sheep. He was singing songs, amen, and he turned them into psalms, amen. He wrote many of those 150 chapters of the book of Psalms. He wrote many of those chapters, and each one of those were a song, amen. Praise God, a psalm is a song. It's a poem set to notes, and he sang when God delivered him out of the hand of his enemies. 2 Samuel 22, 1, then David spoke to the Lord with the words of this song on the day when the Lord had delivered him from the hands of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. And he also sang, amen, when God uh, made a way for the Ark of the Covenant, which symbolizes the presence of God to come out of the enemy nation and to come back to, back to Israel, praise God. And the Bible said in 1 Chronicles 16, 9, sing unto him, sing psalms to him, talk of all his wondrous works. That's what we're singing today, folks. Matthew 26, verse 30, it talks about Jesus and his disciples, and they sang a hymn. Amen. They would sing hymns when they, after, before and after teaching. 2630, and when they had sung a hymn, they went out unto the Mount of Olives. And so our two text passages today. They admonish us. They encourage us, amen, to sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and to sing from our hearts to the Lord. The song that God gave us, we're not just singing them to each other, sing it to each other. We're singing them, amen, to the Lord. We're making melody in our heart to the Lord. Amen. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And when it comes to walking with God, 
Singing is the same thing as praising God. Amen. We're singing uh, to the Lord. We're praising God in song. Amen. And you better believe they'll be singing in heaven also. Amen. Like that old song we sing, I'm just warming up for that meeting on the other side. Praise God. When we praise and worship Him down here, we're, we're getting ready because heaven is going to be full of praise. Amen. I see angels in the book of Revelation saying holy 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 lord god almighty which is and which was and which is to come the almighty the lord god omnipotent he reigneth oh yeah there's singing in heaven the book of Revelation, they sang a new song before the throne and it was the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb. Amen. But you know, after we are gloriously saved by God and He gives us this wonderful new song to sing, amen, it's not too long that we face battles. We have to fight. There will be tests. There will be trials. There will be tribulations. There will be pure persecutions. Amen. That we have to face and we have to endure. Amen. And the storms of life will come our way and try to knock us off course and intimidate us and discourage us. And one of the things it's trying to do is to silence our song. But I'm here to tell you, amen, the storm will not silence my song. I'm going to sing in the midst of the storm. I'm not going to wait for the battle to be over. I'm going to shout now. I'm going to praise now. I'm going to claim victory even when the battle's not over yet. Oh, well, hallelujah. The storm will not silence my song. Storms of sickness come our way. Storms of stress Storms of sadness and sorrow and storms of struggle and suffering come our way. Amen. And we find that when Jesus told the parable of the seed and the sower and the grounds and so forth, four types of ground, same seed, same sower, four different kinds of ground, four different results in the yield, amen, of the crops that came forth. And he talked about the stony ground in Mark chapter 4 verse 5. And he said, some fell on stony ground, the, uh, the seed, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And of course, we know the seed is the Word of God, and the ground is the heart. And so that was the parable. Then later, after he was alone with the disciples, he said, Lord, can you tell us what that really means in everyday English? You know, what does is, what is this stony ground and seed stuff mean? And so he said in these, in verse 16, he was recounting it to his disciples off to the side. These are they likewise which are sown on stony ground who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. <laughs> Amen. They get it. They get get a whole lot of God in their life and they start on this road for the Lord. Amen. They receive it with gladness, but they have no root in themselves and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Immediately, amen, they, they, they start to silence their song. We don't want to do that, folks. That's the worst thing you could do, amen, when persecution comes, when affliction comes, for the word's sake or for any other sake, when life just happens to you, amen, and it happens to all of us, amen. The best thing to do is keep singing the song that God gave you to sing, and I'm going to sing my way out of that affliction. I'm going to sing my way into a sunny day. Praise God. All of these things come our way for the purpose of trying to silence our song to the Lord. But I'm going to tell you something right now. He gave me a song and he gave you a song. And we're going to sing it. We're going to sing it. Amen. We're going to sing it. I'm not talking about just any song. I'm talking about his song. He gave me a new song. I'm going to sing his song. 
I'm going to talk about his kingdom. I'm going to talk about his gospel. I'm going to talk about his love and his mercy and all that he can do for people. Amen. I will sing in the face of adversity. I will sing in the face of uncertainty. I will sing in the face of fear. And I will sing in the face of even chronic situations that don't seem to go away and keep hanging on. I'm going to sing in all of that. Praise God. You know, the children of Israel, they were in the wilderness, right? After they came out of the Red Sea, they got the Ten Commandments and they were walking around. And, you know, 40 years they were there and There was one particular time where they came to a place where the wells were dry and nothing was happening and there was no water, desert place. And they just kind of looked around and they just said, well, it's a dry desert place and we don't have any water. What are we going to do? Well, I guess we're just not going to, we guess we're going to shut up. I guess we're not going to sing anymore. Guess we're just gonna like just just fall apart right here in this desolate land. God got us across the Red Sea just to you know let us this happen in the wilderness. You know they murmured and they had all kinds of issues going on, Amen. But I love what happened in Numbers twenty one seventeen. They got to the place, Amen, where that took place, and they said, you know what? There's only one thing we need to do here. Then Israel sang this song: "Spring up, O oh well." All of you sing to it. So I don't know if anybody was peeking around the mountains looking down at a bunch of people on a dry desert floor with dry wells singing to dry wells saying, Spring up, O oh well. Everybody sing this song. We're, song. we're talking about some water where there is no water. We're talking about some hope where there is no hope. We're talking about some answers where there is no answer. We're talking about something happening where it looks like nothing's happening. Spring up, oh well. Sing to it. Amen. We've got to keep our song going, folks. Psalms 32, 7 says, You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall surround me with songs of deliverance. Amen. That's when we need the songs, folks. Amen. Now, I like it just like you when the day's sunny and, you know, I got a couple of dollar bills in my wallet and go get a, you know, a donut or something and I'm not sick and it seems like the birds are chirping and things are going pretty good. Oh, I love to sing during those times too. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah, you know, you get a vacation or you get a raise at work or some great thing happens and or somebody surprises you haven't seen for a while, all exciting, you want to sing, no problem. Uh, amen. But don't uh, stop singing when the storm comes. Don't stop singing when the wilderness comes in your way. Don't stop singing when it's winter time in your life. Don't stop singing. Oh, hallelujah. Psalm 42, 8. In the night, his song shall be with me. Amen. In the night. That means in dark times in my life, his song shall be with me. But even though it's with me, it's available. I got to choose to sing it. And I will not let the storm silence my song. Amen. Paul and Silas, preachers of the gospel. Amen. We're in an area of preaching the word and trying to do the will of God and the work of God. And amen. Uh, some people caused some trouble. They called the magistrates. They got them arrested and they got thrown into prison. First, they were beaten badly first on their backs. Amen. And then thrown into prison. Amen. Probably with very little kind of medical care on those wounds. Amen. I'm sure that wasn't a big deal back in those days. Here you go. You you, you causing trouble and, and disturbing the peace. This is what you get in our in our city. And they're thrown in there and forgotten in there. Amen. And then the sun goes down. Praise God. But you know what? In the night, his song shall be with me. The sun goes down on that situation. And Paul and Silas are, are in the prison all chained up. Amen. Their backs got to hurt bad. They probably didn't get a whole lot of food and water or any kind of good stuff. And, uh, and they could have done a lot of things. They could have said, well, this is what happens when you try to live for God. They could have done a woe is me. They could have made their own blues song. 
a new title. Amen. But oh no, they didn't do that. Amen. And then midnight came, the midnight hour. Amen. You know, when it's, uh, nobody knows what's going on in the midnight hour. Nobody knows what I'm going through at the midnight. I'm just by myself in my grief and my situation. Amen. But at the midnight hour, Acts 16, 25, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. Amen. And then you just keep reading and the Bible said that an earthquake hit that prison and every prison door flew open. Amen. And from that whole experience, Paul and Silas got all kinds of take, all kinds of medical care, good taken care of, and they baptized the warden of the prison and his household. All because they decided to not to silence their song in the midst of their storm. Oh, hallelujah. James 5.13, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. You know, an affliction is uh, a, health aff a health issue. It could be a mental issue. Amen. It could just be an emotional issue. It could be a relationship issue. It could be a financial issue, afflictions, whatever they are. Amen. Afflictions aren't good. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Amen. You see, when you pray, God will help you with your afflictions. Amen. Because prayer ushers us in to the presence of God. And the Bible said in Psalm 1611, you will show me the path of life in your presence when I'm praying in my affliction. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I get joy and strength from being in his presence in prayer, which makes my heart merry. And when my heart is merry, I'm going to sing his song. I'm going to sing my song to him. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. So don't focus on the storms. Don't focus on the afflictions that come your way. Focus on the one who has the power to calm the storms. We saw what he did on that storm in the Bible. Peace be still. He's got the power to calm our storms. He's got the power to ease our afflictions. Amen. And give us the joy to sing the song that he's given us to sing. And folks, we got a song to sing. There's people out there. Remember, everyone win one this year. Amen. And you know how we're going to do it? Not by looking like we're eating with persimmons or a bunch of pickles all the time, walking around like, i got a terrible life. No. You're not going to attract anybody to that. Amen. But when you're singing and people know you and the people closest to you, when they sing, see you singing, not just because you're happy, when they see you singing, when they know you're going through, they know you're not feeling good. They know you're having troubles and issues in your life. And they see you singing anyway. Oh, that gives praise to God. That's the song he wants us to sing. Praise God. An old Chinese proverb says this, a bird does not sing because it has an answer. It sings because it has a song. Oh, hallelujah. How many have all the answers to life? Okay, I'm raising my hand, but I don't have it up either, okay? Uh, nobody has all the answers to life. I'm not singing because I have an answer. I'm not singing because I know when it's going to come to pass. I'm singing because I've got a song that he gave me to sing, and I'm going to sing it whether I feel like it or not. I will sing that song. <laughs> Woo! Praise God. Amen. One person said, some days there won't be a song in your heart. Sing anyway. Some days you won't feel like singing. Sing anyway. Some days you won't feel like praising. Praise anyway. Amen. Psalms 30 verse 12. So now my heart will sing to you and not be silent. I said, so now my heart will sing to you and not be silent. O oh Lord my God, I will always, I will always give thanks to you. Praise the Lord. I will not be silent. He's done so much for me to be silent. 
I'm going to sing. No storm's going to silence the song of the Lord in my life. Psalm 47, 6, sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises under our King. Sing praises. It tells us four times in one verse, sing praises. Oh, hallelujah. Psalm 104, 33, I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to God while I have my being. Amen. Everybody take a breath. Exhale. That lets you know that we're all alive. Thank God. That means I have my being. You have your being. That qualifies for you having your being. Amen. Because the Bible said the dead praise not God. That means, you know, literally dead, obviously, and spiritually dead people. They don't praise God either because they don't know anything about it and they could care less. Amen. But the Bible says, let everything that has breath Praise the Lord. Let everything has me being in your, in your soul. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. And would you stand with me? I want to read these last three verses. 2 Corinthians 4.16 Therefore we do not give up even though our outer person is being destroyed. That means this body, as we get older, it's basically kind of falling apart. Let's just put it like it is, right? But he said our inward, our inner person is being renewed day by day. For our momentary light affliction is producing for our, us an absolutely incomparable eternal weight of glory. So he's saying when, let's keep our perspective when we compare the storms we're going through to where we're headed in heaven, is he calls it a momentary light affliction. I know we don't feel that way. We're feeling like this is like a big mountain and I don't know what's going on, but he's comparing it to where we're going. Amen. So verse 18, the conclusion of these two verses, so we do not focus on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. God, help us to focus on what is unseen. Help us to focus on our inner man. Amen. Help us to put our treasure in heaven. Help us to focus on your kingdom. Amen. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. We're strangers and pilgrims. It's just going through this life. We're on our way to a better place. Amen. You might have a house or an apartment here, but that's not really your home. Amen. We're strangers and pilgrims. You know our home is? He said, amen. He goes in John chapter 14. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again that where I am, there you may be also. That's our real home. Some kind of mansion that he's making for us. Whatever that means, I don't know. Spiritually or literally or whatever. It doesn't matter to me. I'm going. I'm going to go check it out. You know, as long as I got a popcorn machine in mine or whatever, you know. No, I don't even need that. God, I, I'll, I'll go. Whatever you got for me. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. But folks, the storm will not silence my song. Therefore, we do not give up. Even though things are happening in our bodies, even though things are happening in our hearts and minds, oh, hallelujah, it's just a light affliction compared to the eternal weight of glory waiting for us. Because eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered in the heart of man what God has prepared for them that love Him. But He has given us a little glimpse of all those things in His Spirit. Oh, praise God. So we do not focus. God, help us not to focus 
on the dry ground where there's no water. Help us not to focus. Amen. At the midnight hour when we're in pain and it seems like nobody cares and we're just locked up behind these walls, in these bars, whatever those might re represent in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Now let's not focus on those bars and focus on those wounds. Let's focus on the song that came from the God. Amen. That can do impossible things in my life. Amen. And I'm going to sing even if I can barely get it out. I'm going to sing even if it doesn't even sound normal. I'm going to sing. I'm going to sing in my storm. Praise the Lord.